Hey everybody, how you doing? We're going to start a brand new series I'm excited about today, and it's going to be called Warhammer The End Times, because that's exactly what's happening in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. So let's get to the first part. The world is ending, though few believe it. The Dark Gods no longer content to toy with the mortal world, have set schemes in motion to claim it once and for all. As Morslieb, the Chaos Moon, hangs low in the heavens, the barbarian hordes of the ever-chosen march on the Empire. Ancient Ulthwan drowns in fire and madness. Forests tremble to the hooves of stampeding bray herds. Ratmen cease their gnawing upon the bowels of the earth and rise in a swarm vast enough to consume the world. Everywhere, the walls of civilization itself crumble. Yet even as the world, as the, I'm sorry, as the realms of the old world look to their borders, an old evil coalesces. Archon, the black, most faithful servant of the great necromancer Nagash, has long labored to restore his dark master. Deeming that the moment of resurrection is at hand, he forges common cause with the vampire Manfred von Karstein. Striking from the benighted land of Sylvania, the unholy duo enact a plan that will see Nagash walk the world once more. But this is a time of treachery and the alliance between Arkan and Manfred is but one that will be tested. Death rises. Kingdoms fall. Chaos reigns. These are the end times. How's that? Sound like fun? And then right after that, they go into a second in time description. Here we go. I have seen this world's demise. More sleep, the accursed orb waxes against crimson skies. Magic rises and reality subsides leaving only madness in its wake. Vermin cease their gnawing and swarm to the surface, answering their horned master's call. First to fall are the temples of the Old Ones. Abandoned by defenders, who knows what end draws near? Mankind does not recognize its doom. Not yet. They hear only the drums in the north, and know that war is come. Some will fight. Others will abandon reason, seeking salvation in scripture or the scourge. They are deceived. The dark brothers are stronger than ever, and the old gods fade. Only in death will any respite be found. In a land of mist, the danger is closer still. Pride has ever been the folly of that shrouded land. And so it will be again. When the dragons fly as one, an ancient lie will at last be exposed. A revelation that will shake Ulfwan to its roots of its mountains. The mirror of light and dark will shatter, and 
and Narayan's heirs will fight for the legacy of Cain amidst the ashes of the phoenix. The three-eyed king has long awaited his, this moment, the hour in which his destiny is at last unveiled. He leads an army of madness and rage against which no sane being would willingly stand. Perhaps I am not sane, as I will fight one last time, not for victory, but for survival, for the hope a spark can endure. It is a slender hope, and the laughter of dark gods rings loud in my ears. These are the end times. Ha ah, ha, there's the second one for you. Now that one I found more interesting because it talks about something that I have long, long suggested about the uh, elves. And that is, I never quite understood Anarion's story and that part where um, he meets, uh, you know, Morgath, uh, the, 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 the witch king's mother, you know what I mean? And how exactly that came about. He just walked into a cave. There she was surrounded by some cultists. He just killed them all and woo, he fell in love and ba-bam, boom. The rest, that just seemed strange. And I think we're going to find out right now that it is strange. And we're going to find out another thing that I don't think that, um, I think they played with the fire. And I think the Witch King was supposed to be the next heir. I just think he was unpopular. And because other people didn't like him, they played with that fire that he stepped through when he got burned instead of passing through it. And I believe that all of this time when he says he's the rightful heir, he's telling the truth. Yep, and the Phoenix King and everybody, they were lying. And that's what they mean when they say light and dark will switch. We'll find out that the Dark Elves were really telling the truth they really were wronged. They really do have a reason to be pissed off. And the Phoenix King and, and everything like that, the princes, uh, were really, really the ones who are wrong. And this is proof because the Dark Elves, they're multiplying. They're growing. Okay? Their population is expanding. Whereas the other ones and their philosophy on Ulthwen, uh, they're dying. So... Maybe he was meant to rule from the first time around. Until next time. Next time we will go into more stories about the old ones. Or the slan, as they're called in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. If you check out my Rogue Trader videos, you'll find that they actually state in 40k there used to be slan. And I think that the slan as they leave the Warhammer fantasy battle world, will enter the Warhammer 40k world as the return of the old ones. Think about it. Until then, bye.